Welcome to this uh, second webinar. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the French cluster, we, ha we are a pool of French experts uh, based in Los Angeles and we thrive to help other professionals in the region to succeed in their career, whether they are entrepreneurs or, or employees. We do organize regular networking events and we hope to be back so soon with them. Um, we are also posting advices on our blog and give you access to a large network uh, that we have gathered in LA where when you have a project uh, specific. Um, we do also podcast and webinar like this one today. After our first uh, webinar a few weeks ago with uh, different topics on the immigration, financial help and investment, we continue our webinar series with, with a hot topic now, uh, the commercial real estate and uh, the lease. Um, we will address the, those topics during our conversation. And if you have specific questions, do not hesitate to use the chat box and we will answer them uh, during the webinar. So we do have today uh, Claire Schmidt, Frank Morino, and uh, David Bismuth. Uh, they will introduce themselves in a few minutes. And uh, Frank, I guess you are starting. Okay, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Frank Morino. I'm a commercial real estate broker. I help people in the acquisition of their working space. And uh, today I'm going to tell you about what is going on in this mass confusion about uh, rents and tenants' rights uh, with respect to COVID-19. <clears throat> so I start quickly saying, on March 17th, Garcetti signed an ordinance that would protect the tenants from being evicted uh, if, um, if they couldn't pay rent. Uh, on March 30th, this was rescinded. And then there's been other uh, um, moratoriums and other uh, directives from the county, from the state. Um, and right now, the uh, California Assembly is discussing this new um, uh, law project, SB 939, which would really give uh, tenants a lot of power in their ability to negotiate with the landlords. However, uh, nothing, is, um, nothing is done, nothing is certain. And so uh, when, as we go, I'll, I'll turn it over to our, uh, to our lawyer friends here who, uh, who, who will um, uh, you know, give you their opinion on this. What uh, I would say is that you know, you, tenants have rights and obligations, uh, but they, right now we're in a situation, a uh, fluid situation, as I say, where you, you, you're going to have to talk to a lawyer to make sure you know what you're doing. Um, the, the one thing I'll start by saying is the only real, the only real uh, 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 legal advice I can give you as a broker is do not sign anything that's put in front of you by the landlord without running it by your lawyer first. Uh, don't sign anything. That one I'm sure about. I can't give you any more legal advice than this, but uh, this one is safe and sound. Don't don't sign anything. You never know. It, it will probably be biased, or you'll probably have a trap in there that you uh, may not see. And once it's signed, it's difficult to unsign. So this this is I would start. Um, this said. Um, there are three uh, uh, broad categories of tenants. Oh. Broad categories of, go ahead. Yes, oh. if I may, uh, Frank, um, mm -hmm. you're right when you when you are when you are saying that tenants' uh, right and obligation can be confusing. Uh, however, it's important that uh, tenants, but actually tenants and landlord, uh, keep in mind that. Uh, but I'm talking about tenants because they're especially the ones that sometimes think that they are cornered and have to agree to, uh, to conditions that are imposed on them, but tenants have rights uh, and those rights are, dif are at different levels. Um, first of all, they of course have a contract that, uh, that they have to read or that they have to have someone read for them and understand because they, there, can, they, there might be or maybe and often are some uh, protections in the contracts in the lease. 
uh, they have protections uh, in the California Civil <coughs> Code, and they also have protections at common law. So um, what you're, what you're uh, uh, saying is absolutely right. And, uh, and I think uh, Claire and, and I have seen these things happen some, uh, sometimes where, um, where uh, landlords um, try and force uh, their tenants to, to sign some documents which sometimes uh, have some unacceptable provisions as a conditions to start negotiating and uh, it's important for the tenants to understand that they first of all don't have to sign that to negotiate but also that if they don't sign it their landlord might end up being forced to negotiate in any case because they're not necessarily in a in a position of uh, of power um, yeah. And this is Claire. So uh, I'm Claire Schmidt. I've been uh, in the States for 20 years. Um, I'm um, practicing real estate. I've practiced heavily in real estate in a law firm before. Um, on the landlord side, now I'm counsel for the company. But I wanted to go back to what Frank said on the, on the law. But what we have right now um, is right. You also have to look at um, each city you, you might have in this end because the laws might be different. Um, so for Los Angeles, for instance, um, Frank uh, said, the landlord cannot evict you, so that's protected. Um, and you don't have to provide um, documents or anything, but Long Beach might be different. Um, Long Beach give you uh, more protections, but you do have to provide also documents to your landlord showing that you've been affected by the COVID-19. Uh, so you need to look also specifically on each, um, for each city where your lease is. It might be Los Angeles, it might be Long Beach, it might be Pasadena, it might be Beverly Hills, maybe San Francisco. They're all a little bit different in terms of protection they give you. And, um, but in a general matter, the state um, gives you that protection that you cannot be evicted until uh, the ban is being uh, lifted. So that's more like as a general overview of what the California law and, and says and uh, in, in that terms. And then we can talk more details about reviewing your contracts and things like that, Julius. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. If I if I may, um, I was so this brings us back to one point is is that I think sooner or later this rent will be due. Uh, you know, there's a postponement. There's all kinds of things that that you can use, but the the reality of this is if you're in business today and you didn't pay, um, you know, you didn't pay rent. Um, it's a good thing, it's, it's helping, it's giving you a pocket of air that uh, is often much needed, but eventually this money will be due. So how do you, uh, how do you uh, um, go about negotiating with your, with your landlord, right? So we had three, uh, you know, earlier three broad categories of tenants, office, industrial, retail. Uh, it seems industrial guys are doing okay uh office you cannot go into an office building and i wouldn't recommend really right now you go into the office unless you really need to but the guys that were really affected heavily are the retail users restaurant bars uh clothing stores etc these people don't have access to their space uh and and even if they did they wouldn't have any um, they wouldn't have any clients so um based on this um you have to realize one thing, and in lease negotiations, no matter what, uh, um, whether or not it's related to C-19, um, your interest and the interest of the landlord diverge uh, um, diametrically because you want to spend the least amount of possible uh, on your rent and they want you to spend them as much as possible uh, on your rent, right? So you you're, realize this, you're, you're Landlord is not your friend. I mean, even if he is your friend, he's not 
it, and, and realize that um, you need to negotiate each and every aspect of your lease. And you, if you can do this before you sign the lease, it's good. Now you've signed the lease. And we're in that situation where you signed the lease and you can't pay rent. So um, what can you do? You know, your goal is to try not to pay, stay in business, maintain a good relationship with your landlord because when we're all gone away, eventually in the next five, 10 years, it's gonna be you and your landlord, you and the management company, and you have to maintain somewhat of a workable uh, relationship. So I'm jumping into this. You also have to realize that landlords uh, have their own obligations. You know, they have a mortgage, they have a bank that, that is breathing down their neck. They have partners. They have also their, the obligation to maintain the property in, in, in good shape. So this uh, requires, um, you know, they maintain the utilities, they maintain the systems in the building, they have staff and salaries for this. So realize that, that landlords uh, also have some obligations in this lease when you approach your, your, your negotiation with them. So as you approach your negotiation with them, the, the one thing that is important, if you haven't done it now, because we're a little bit late in the game, but go and talk to him as soon as possible. Be honest and say, look, uh, business is down. I mean, it's not going to be news to them. Business is down. I can't pay rent. And uh, um, be honest, supply, if you can, you know, supply them with figures showing uh, the decrease in revenues, et cetera. And um, put it in a letter and then let them come back at you to see what it is that they can do for you. Um, and, and now there seems to be a, a momentum and I speak with a lot of landlords and landlord reps and, uh, and most of them will be open to negotiating somehow. But let them come at you first because this will give you a ceiling, right? The landlord says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll absorb, the, I'll absorb the rent. I'll absorb you of the rent for three months or I will make you pay half rent for the next three months, et cetera, right? Well, now you know where, they're, where they stand and from this, you've kind of brought them into uh, your, your world, your environment, and uh, you, you see where it is that, they're, you know, that they're, their response is, evaluate their response. So, um, and I don't want to monopolize the, the, oh. the position, so I want to briefly tell you that there is, in my opinion, Just, Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. Um, no, I think it's important what you said, and it's, uh, it's very true. I think, uh, I think negotiations is, uh, is really primordial, um, um, a frontal opposition between tenant and landlords doesn't really make sense from a practical and a financial standpoint. Um, from, the, from, the, from the tenant's pers perspective, uh, um, litigation would be expensive. And and they would uh, they would run the risk of uh, of getting out of it without uh, without um, a premise and a, and a business to run, and from a landlord perspective, uh, the 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 amount of rent they could recover uh, would 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 be exceeded by far by the the cost of of, of litigation. So 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 that's why. Um, that's why a lot of uh, a lot of tenants and landlords have starting to negotiate and to uh, and to find uh, sometimes some uh, some creative solutions that would satisfy both um, uh, and and that would also for the landlord uh, uh, prevent them from getting out of this crisis with with a lot sometimes a lot of uh, of empty premises. Uh, to rent in, a, in, a, in an economical situation that's very uncertain and, 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 and probably for lower rents, which we're about to discuss the, the solutions, right? Well, yeah, the, 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 the typical solutions that, that we have, and, and it is important to realize that even if you think, um, you know, um, I'm not a lawyer again, but, you know, I've been to court more often than I needed to in my career to, you know, oftentimes as a witness, and I can tell you that the outcome is never certain. The, 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 the costs are very expensive for you and for the landlord. Usually the landlord will have more money than you. So if you, if you can avoid going there uh, to begin with, and even if you go there, the, the judge will always say, well, what have you tried to do so far? What have you offered? You know? 
you have to have a little plan here. The first, um, the first one is the, the, the easiest one that a lot of people are doing. Say, look, I'm not going to pay for the next three months. So let's say your rent is ten thousand dollars a month. That's thirty thousand dollars you will owe. And then let will say, well, over the next ten months, pay me three grand in addition to the normal rent. So that's good because it's given you a pocket of air up front. Uh, the drawback of this is that you're 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 going to take a hit right away on the increases in rent, right? If you had a hard time paying rent, and all of a sudden now you got to pay 30, 40 percent more in rent. Uh, as soon as you start paying rent again, this might put you uh, financially on the back foot. And so another one is to try to defer it later. Says, well, you know, I owe you three months or six months of rent, and we'll start paying a year from now. It's a little more difficult. Uh, but it certainly will give you time to uh, time to ramp up again. We're all hoping that in six months we'll be back uh, where we were before this uh, this pandemic. Um, that's a little bit of a of a you know that's a little better solution uh, because it does give you uh, time to get back on your feet, but not as much as as trying to renegotiate putting in the back of the lease. And I'll get there. Before that, there was another point in the outline that I brought up is to simply go to them and say, look, I can't pay rent, absolve, absolve me of all my rent obligation for the next three or six months. It's possible, but highly unlikely. Like a friend of mine likes to say, it's possible, but not probable. And landlords will want to get their money back somehow. But you can also start with it, say, look, I can't pay, you know, just, just, and, you, you never know, sometimes these things can work, but the best way to look at this is to, to go to the landlord with the idea of what, how, how, can you, how can you put in front of them something that would benefit them. And mind you, some are not able to do it because they don't necessarily have the cash flow. But if you have a large landlord, uh, what I mean by a large landlord is a, a, a landlord that's you know, an institutional landlord, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, in most cases, they might be able to absorb you know, some, some delay in rent, what you tell them is you say, look, give me, give me a break for six months. And then at the end of the year, at the end of the lease, I will add a year's worth of rent. So you're trading six months at today's price for 12 months at a, you know, at something down the line, three, four, five years down the line, where you know, typically a rent has a two to 3% increase. So in your fifth year of the lease, your rent is a little bit higher. And you offer them, you say, look, I'm not going to do this, but I'm going to extend my, my lease by three months, by six months, by a year at the then prevailing rate. And so eventually you will be made whole on the, on the, um, um, you know, on the lease. And what, what happens here is uh, for most landlords, it's acceptable. Also, uh, from your standpoint, look at it. If you're going to be in business, you're going to stay in business, you're going to need a space you're going to need to extend your lease no matter what when it comes due so here yes it might not be the ideal situation but you're going to extend your lease you're going to need a location especially retails uh, restaurants you can't just pick up go and 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 you know forego the, the money that you spend on the space etc so this will allow you to remain in the space keep a relationship with your landlord and yes the, 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 the term will be extended, but no matter what, you'll have to extend it. And no matter what, you'll probably be at a higher rate than the one you have today. So you show the landlord the benefits of doing this. Now, sometimes landlord will not accept that. Uh, sometimes they can't, or sometimes you're just bumping into a wall. So uh, there's other tools uh, available to you. Uh, one of them uh, that I've seen used successfully by uh, um, ironically, by, by mostly by landlords, but it's uh, Chapter 11, where you put yourself in bankruptcy, a reorganization, and it puts all the, all the creditors away. There's provisions in the lease most of the time that forbid you or that put you in default, whereby declaring bankruptcy is a default on the part of tenant, and it becomes a little sticky. Uh, but this is probably where I'm going to turn it off, uh, turn it over. To my to my favorite guys here, and, um, and then if you have more if you have more questions on on the on the lease and how to negotiate it, uh, you know, see me after, call me, uh, interject. But come 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 to the idea that that negotiation is always possible. If you ask, if you ask nicely, if you give them if you give them uh, reasons, 
uh, usually you'll be able to, to work something out. Try that um, before. Try that first. Um, I agree with you, Frank, on, 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 on everything you said. Uh, I think we, we could also add that uh, uh, besides solution that can be found regarding uh, uh, past trend due, um, there are also some negotiation to have uh, about future rents because because um, it is not because the 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 the, the lockdown the, the stay at home order will be lifted that businesses are going to are going to um, to start again as they were before. Um, so 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 part of the negotiation is also uh, going to be. Uh, concerning the future rents uh, and also not just rents but future conditions so we've seen we've seen uh, uh, um, uh, in terms of, of for commercial rents um, uh, rent changing from a fixed amount to only a percentage of, of future of future revenues at least for a certain period of time until revenue reach a certain amount um, and there are a lot of inventive solutions because we're in a, in a negotiation so you can you can also for instance if you're if you're if you're uh, operating in a mall you can also negotiate a, a better space because because at the end of this crisis a lot of space are, a lot of spaces are going to be uh, uh, available uh, you can also include uh, maybe some some better, uh, some some more exposure, some better exposure in the mall, more advertisement, something like that. There are there are a lot of uh, of solutions, but I think the the core of this discussion is that it's very important uh, uh, to start negotiating for both parties. Yeah, and I and I want to say like, you know, the, the tenant is not the only one looking at their lease and then negotiating. The landlord too is in a position sometimes very difficult where they have a mortgage to pay and things like that and um, they if you approach them earlier they're willing to usually depending on the situation they're going to be willing to negotiate with you and they are they are creative way like uh, David mentioned um, another creative way would be I don't know if the tenant is paying for parking space and cannot um, access right now uh, the premises they can get that um, waived um, so there are different things most likely the lease of the tenant is more landlord oriented so it's going to be i mean you have to review your lease carefully read it see if you have a way out in there i know a lot of people are talking about the force majeure but most of the time um, rent is excluded from that you do have also uh, the option when you look at your lease, see if um, you can have an abatement of rent. If you cannot access your premises, that's a possibility that you can have in there. You might have business interruption insurance, um, which you, uh, might be excluded, not excluded, but you still have to review your terms and see what's in there. And if you can um, use that type of insurance that you have, if you, if you have one. So, um, just um you will have to do your homework and review the lease landlords are reviewing the leases to see where they are at and not and how they can uh, they can help and if and if there is nothing in the lease that you can that can help you you sh still should approach the landlord um, because it's for the benefit of both of them of tenants and landlord to try to come to a resolution um, and um, and fix the situation and see how we uh, we can help each other in that situation. On, on the business interruption, uh, with the clients that I have now, it seems like uh, the insurances have been able to uh, um, walk away from their responsibility for this where COVID-19 was not covered. You guys probably know that. Um, it's just a, a, an interesting point, which I think in the, in the future, uh, pandemics and those things, maybe we hope it doesn't happen again, but it probably will. And so these are things that now should be negotiated in the, you know, with your insurance company and in and, and the lease and said, well, you know, if, if our insurance doesn't kick in, um, we're still, you know, we should still be absolved. And I think we're going to see a lot of new um, uh, 
um, paragraphs in the lease about pandemics and, and what happens in those cases because now um, you know, that it happens. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's very true about the, about the, um, the insurances. Um, we've also seen a, a lot of, uh, of, um, of class actions being filed against uh, big insurance uh, uh, companies uh, regarding uh, business inter interruption policies. Uh, this is a this is an issue that's going to be uh, uh, heavily debated and, and resolved in court. Now there is a, there is a public policy issue on this. Is that there are so many claims and so many businesses that have been claiming that insurance that uh, insurance don't just don't have the don't have the fund to uh, to uh, to indemnify them. So I think that uh, without without a uh, big uh, government help uh, on one side or another, or at least a big government inter intervention, uh, if these insurance companies were to be, uh, to be held uh, uh, responsible to pay for these for this in 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 indemnities, they're just gonna have to close business uh, because if they just don't have the funds, um, yeah. Um, well, I didn't introduce myself, by the way. <laughs> it's at the end of the, of the podcast. Uh, my name is David Bismuth. I'm a, I'm a corporate and business attorney. I, uh, I, help, I help entrepreneurs and investors in, uh, in their uh, various transactions and also, also in, their, in, their, um, in their business issues, so pre-litigation and, 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 and litigation. Uh, I think uh, we haven't we haven't talked about one point, which is the the SB nine thirty nine, which is a uh, which is a, a bill that's actually going to uh, be debated uh, starting today, and uh, that if passed would be um, a big help to tenant. Although although I think it would not resolve all the issues, of course, if it were to pass as it is drafted right now. Uh, so, um, so that, that bill uh, uh, has a first part about, about eviction. So it, it's, it's, it's basically to, to, to prevent uh, 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 eviction in, in many cases. And the, the second section uh, is a protection for commercial, for commercial tenants and uh, that would allow uh, commercial tenants that are fulfilling certain uh, prerequisites in terms of uh, revenue loss and uh, and being affected by the by the COVID nineteen uh, that would allow them to to kind of force trigger a negotiation with their landlord and if such uh, negotiation were were not to 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 be concluded in a in a in a in a satisfactory position with, uh, situation, which is a deal uh, that would allow tenants to uh, terminate their lease with no other cost than uh, past due rent, and it's important to uh, to insist on that word due because it is not defined in the bill. So whether the rent is due for the months of, um, of stay at home order is still very debatable. And I think it could, uh, it could um, give way to a lot of discussion and possible uh, litigation. Quickly also, there's a point of, when we had talked about it in, in private before is, what happens to the security deposit? A lot of new companies have got heavy security deposits. So how does this, you know, how does this come into play when you do this? Uh, I think you were the opinion that um, we, we concluded in favor of the tenant that, that they should get their security deposit because the security deposit uh, cannot be used for rent, even though that's what it says in the lease, because, uh, you know, we're debating that rent is not due, therefore security deposit should be reimbursed. There's one other aspect also is, um, especially in, in retail, um, the tenant improvement value that, um, the tenant has put in the space, um, you know, what happens to this? You know, people spend uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars improving the space and now they 
may with SB 939 have the ability to walk away, but uh, they're also walking away from, uh, you know, most of the time a substantial investment. And um, that's important. And also in the case where the landlord paid for the improvements, then that's also unclear what happens and if landlord would have a right to recoup their tenant, you know, their tenant improvement. In general, if you, we see if, you know, in a, in a, in a general case of default, by tenant, uh, the 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 amount of improvement that the landlord the landlord has spent uh, can become due. Uh, landlords spend uh, three four hundred thousand dollars improving your office or your retail space, and um, oftentimes they will want at least a pro rata share of what's uh, you know what's left on the unamortized portion of the tenant improvement. Um, that is also um, that is also unclear. But those are things that you you have to, to realize. And then last point, uh, I mean, there's also a misconception, I think with a lot of people that the real estate market is gonna slide. Uh, I don't, don't think so. I see uh, every day that there's a ton of money available. There are funds that are being put together. BlackRock just raised $700 million in Europe to, to be able to buy uh, distressed properties and they're waiting in the wings and so there's um it's not going to be what people think it is where the buildings are completely vacant and then you know you can negotiate any kind of deal you want i think that these big funds are going to take over and i think we also see a lot of activity this morning uh there's an 1100 dollar a foot building that just sold in beverly Hills. these guys just closed escrow on a, a Smaller building is a $35 million deal, but the value was $1,100 a foot. That's a ton of money, and uh, that just shows that the market might not be as um, sick or vulnerable as people think it is. And that's also th you know that's also something to think about in your in your negotiations, right? There's nothing more uh, retarded than going to the landlord and says, "Well, you might as well give it to me for half price, otherwise you're going to keep it." Unfortunately, it doesn't work like this. And I'll, you know, uh, anybody wants to call me, I'll expand on that with them. But uh, don't think that there's still a lot of money in the market. There's many things to think about. And also, uh, at some point, uh, you know, it's easier for the landlord to throw in the towel uh, than, than negotiate with you. So, again, you know, back and forth. Uh, but, yeah, you know, negotiations over litigation every time. Yeah. yeah, and as an attorney, I, I would agree. I would agree to you. Just uh, it's 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 easier to negotiate than go for litigation. Um, David mentioned before the reason why. So just review your contracts. Be have a detailed plan for your landlord. Approach your landlord. Be ready to have some concession. Make some concessions um, for your landlord. But like David say, even though there's a moratorium right now and you don't have to pay the rent, at one point the rent's gonna have to be paid. So you might as well um, start talking to your landlord now and see what you can do and how um, you can uh, defer the rent or get other things. There are other creative ways uh, to, to do that. And that's where um, brokers are there for and lawyers are there for to, to help you on, uh, on these topics. Okay, so I, I just want to take uh, one minute so right now to ask um, uh, our attendants if there is any questions. So you can ask those questions uh, through the Q&A &Q or uh, with raising your hands on, uh, on, uh, on the chat windows. I'm just, uh, okay, so you can continue. That's it. A broker that has nothing to say. That's impossible. It's like a lawyer has nothing to say. That's impossible. So um, we were uh, um, no, we were stressing the importance of of, uh, of a negotiated deal. Um, I think it's the best way. It should be part of your, you know, as a as a as an entrepreneur or as a uh, businessman. It should be part of your business plan. Um, and um, and even if you're not in a in a dire situation see what you have to you know see what you have to gain here uh, deferred rent um 
in this market has to be has to be useful, especially in the in the retail sector. Money you don't pay now, and you can pay later. It's always you know, uh, money now is always more expensive than money later. So look at your look at your options. Have a have a two hour uh, conference with your with your attorney and go through the lease so you understand you know what what's in your lease to begin with. Uh, you'd be surprised the number of people that don't necessarily know what they signed at the time they signed it, um, which is why sometimes we do what's called lease audit, which is really reading the lease for the tenant, pointing out the things that are important. Uh, Get, get them to understand you know what's what's in there the the, the important dates the prices the, the the trigger points when rents are gonna go up when uh, um, you know what is gonna be due when is your you know when is your lease up There's, you'd be surprised the number of people who don't exactly know when their lease expires oh it's sometimes next year maybe the year after I look at those things figure it out um, if you're at the end of your if you're at the end of your lease, It'd probably be a lot easier to negotiate uh, with your landlord. There's not a lot of time left um, on the lease. It um, it gives you, it puts you in a position of strength whereby, you know, your your landlord. If you've been a good tenant and you're rent paying tenant, landlord's going to want to keep you. It's a lot cheaper for a tenant for a landlord sorry, to to retain their tenants and to deal with a known quantity. A guy's been there for five years, been paying rent every month for five years, um, has a lot more clout than a new company, an unknown company, right? It's obvious. So uh, landlords will want to will want to work with you. They'll want to retain you. You're a known quantity. Uh, they, you know, you, you, you establish your, your credit and your credit worthiness with them and your credibility. Um, They've seen that whatever operation you had was a was a viable operation. It's making money. It's helping them pay rent. Um, that's what they want. So um, you know, look at all these things. Take your time, and um, but but have a conversation. You know, at a, a two thousand dollar or three thousand, whatever it is, the fee that you'll spend now on uh, legal review uh, is a lot less than uh, if you have to hire a uh, litigator down the line. Um, you know, uh, it, it costs literally tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to, to, go to court, which is the way your landlord is not gonna be uh, so keen on, um, on going to court themselves if they, can, if they can avoid it. Even though they have their in-house, um, you know, big companies, you always have uh, 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 their in-house attorneys. Some have floors of attorneys. Like, um, voila. Um, Questions? Yes. Oh, there's a question? Please, somebody ask one question. No, no, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I think, I think what, you say, what you say is very right. And I think, and I think that's why we've seen a lot of, uh, of, uh, of negotiations between tenants and landlords. Uh, um, um, Usually, usually both parties are willing to find a, a solution uh, outside of the courts, and and uh, and I think I think both tenants and landlord have, have been somehow reason, reasonable. Of course, we've seen some uh, some uh, some some. So I've seen some landlords, you know, uh, 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 not being willing to negotiate. To have, a, for example, a, a non-disclosure agreement, and not being, not, be, not not willing to protect the the, the tenant on the, on the non-disclosure, and just wanting their own uh, information to be protected. Um, I, I want to add that that's probably not the time to do to do that. Uh, 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 <laughs> negotiation has has to has to happen, and it's better to do it before you have tens of of thousands of dollars in, in, in legal bill on, on, on the table. And, and I think in your, in your, sorry, I'm, I'm the, and I think in your experience, you'll see that, that uh, judges will invite that. They will tell you, they'll say, well, what have you done? What have you discussed so far? Where are things at? You know, it's never, uh, it's never black and white. You'd be surprised how much they will, uh, after you spend the money on attorneys on both sides, they'll invite you to have a you know a discussion outside of the court and see what well, can you guys try to resolve this and come back to me next week or next month with a plan. 
So um, um, sooner or later, you'll have to negotiate. I think you can go to your broker too. I mean, broker will not give you legal advice, but a broker, I mean, um, a decent broker will at least help you understand what is in your lease, uh, telling you what what you know what the ins and outs of uh, those things are, so you can. Um, real estate brokers cannot, you know, we, we don't charge by the hour. So it's a, it's a free, um, uh, resource. Um, don't abuse it, but it's a free, you know, it's, it's a free resource. A good broker will tell you about what is in your lease and then eventually we'll tell you to go and, and see, uh, legal advice. Mm. We do have a, a couple of questions. Uh, the first one uh, um, is uh, relative to the negotiation. Uh, can a real estate broker work on my lease and help me negotiate, even if he's not my original broker? And how much will I pay? Um, in, in California, in the United States in general, in California, the landlord pays for the brokers. Uh, the landlord has a budget, he pays for his own broker, and then he pays for um, the broker that brings in the tenant. It might seem like a conflict of interest, but it's not, because uh, landlords recognize the value of a tenant, the tenant that's brought to them by, by a broker, so they will pay the broker to bring the tenant to the table, even if the tenant broker will work his best to get the most favorable terms for his uh, client. As far as helping somebody who already has a lease and simply answering their question, um, I will do that because it's a way for me to meet people and develop relationships um, up to a certain point. And the service is free of charge. Again, we're not allowed to uh, tell you, uh, and God knows I wish I could, but we tell people say, okay, well, I'll read your lease, but you know, we'll charge you X amount an hour. We can't do that. So um, find yourself a broker who's willing to help you, and um, he can he can go even as far as, as representing you with the with the landlord. I have some clients. I have some clients now, and I'm sort of doing pro bono work because I want to develop a relationship with them. I like them. It's not um, too involved, and um, we we will guide you. You know, we can guide you through this. And we can also give you some some pointers as to how to approach uh, your landlord. You know, we negotiate every day uh, with landlords, with with different entities, with the with the landlord's broker. You know, landlords oftentimes have their own broker, and it's not necessarily a bad idea to go through them because they um, we take the emotions out of the deal. Uh, we you know we talk to a colleague on a professional level about what's possible, what's not possible. Uh, some guys tend to, you know, some guys put their ego into this. Uh, it's their own business. I don't see the point. It's just, uh, it's just a deal. And, um, but yes, to answer your question <laughs> in a succinct way, we can help. Brokers can help. And uh, the second question is, um, what are the top two or three concerns or, or weaknesses uh, that an institutional landlord has uh, when dealing with a tenant? Uh, how can those concerns be used in negotiation? Well, they, you know, it's, it's that they don't want to. They don't want to lose the tenant. They want to keep. You know, the more square foot you occupy, the more cloud you have, of course. Uh, but landlords in general uh, want to keep their tenants, even if you have a thousand feet, a couple thousand feet. Um, it's, it's important for them because, um, you know, the game is to, to buy a building, fill it up, go back to the bank and say, Hey, look, my building's filled up now. And I want you guys to give me uh, more money, uh, you know, uh, to the building, get the, get the money in. So they value you as a tenant, especially if you've been there and you've demonstrated your, your, your abilities to pay and to be a good, um, a good tenant. So, the, you know, they're just like, landlords are all the same, as if you or not, they want to keep their tenants, especially the good ones. No, of, of, cor of course, but, but, but also, uh, um, I, I don't know if you'd call it a, a weakness, but, 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 but 
at at law whether whether uh, past trend is due is very deba debatable. It, it's of course uh, uh, it, it of course depends on the on the facts and circumstances of 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 every of every tenant, but but it's not because a landlord will you know. Uh, slam their fist with a document on the table and tell you to pay to pay rent and sign documents that that you sh that you that you have to do it. We're in a situation that's unprecedented, and because it's a situation that's that's unpre unprecedented, it hasn't been decided in courts. So so there are no there they, they, the, the the rules regarding how to deal with this crisis and its consequences still have to be defined and if we're using uh, uh, by analogy past cases which is because that's what we do in, in law it's not it's not it's not sure i say i'd say it's maybe it's maybe a, a 50 50 maybe it's even more maybe um, i can't i'm i can't i can't i can not really tell maybe it's more in the in the in favor of the of the of the tenants, but it's certainly not uh, uh, um, a situation of absolute power in, in, in the in the for, for, for the landlord. And and of course and of course there is this uh, this bill that's being that that's being uh, uh, discussed, uh, which if if passed will will allow the tenant to just terminate their lease. And uh, and leave the, the landlord with, with with empty spaces. And and this this bill should give the tenants some leeway or some some you know uh, a little bit of the upper hand because on our side we see emails every day from from Boma you know the association of building owners from from all kinds of uh, real estate company uh inviting us to call our our representative and tell them that this bill is unacceptable so it's certainly shaken the 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 landlord side of the equation i mean they yes, are we, they're very without being passed without being passed it's already it's already uh, uh shifted the balance of power a little bit they're very very controversial uh opposed um by all 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 the landlords association that you can imagine and and also uh, a landlord brokers company, you know, the big, uh, uh -huh. the big CDR, you can Wakefield, et cetera. They're not, um, you know, they would invite you to oppose this legislation because, and, and that's another discussion, but you can see how, um, you know, it would really limit a lot of landlords. Uh, if, 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 you, if you ultimately have the right to walk away from your lease, um, this is a hell of a tool regardless of the tenant improvement amount that you're leaving behind or security deposit. Um, it's, um, we'll see, you know, we'll see how it says in its final form, but you're right. This is going to be a big, uh, tool for tenants, uh, to, to have in their, um, in their toolbox. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. Uh, see if we don't have any other questions, uh, I think we are going to close the, the webinar for today. Um, no, I don't see any other. Uh, Claire, Frank, and David, uh, thank you for all the information you passed on today. Um, just uh, for you to know, the slides will be sent to attendees and the webinar will be posted for, for replay. If you have specific questions, do not hesitate to contact us through the website, LinkedIn or Facebook. Our contact information uh, are here on the last slide, uh, but you will have it uh, with, uh, uh, with your email. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, before closing, I would like to address a special thanks to Jean-Baptiste Piron for his behind the scenes critical help for the French cluster, especially today for managing the webinar, as well as uh, all the social networks that are very time consuming. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.